We're back, We're and back. we have the combination. <laughs> Schlockens! One, uh, two, three, four, five. <laughs> um, so uh, just a heads up, I'm feeling a lot better. You can hear my voice now, so that's really good. As is evidenced by the fact that I'm sitting next to him and not wearing a hazmat suit. Yes. Um, and uh, we are going to get back to Steven Universe. I don't know if we can get to it this week, but next week we definitely can. Uh, so, you know, we should probably be caught up by next week. I mean, there's a lot of episodes, but I mean, like, I, I, I got a few days where I, I can make room for it. So uh, you'll probably see more of those. But We will uh, eat garnet and shit amethyst for you people. <laughs> that, that sounded awful. <laughs> In every conception of that, that sounded awful. Okay, we will eat garnet and shit pearls. Much nice better. and smooth okay, and round. Nice. Yes, I, I can uh, do There's a colonic cleanser for you. <laughs> so, um, okay, so, because uh, we are back with Real Thoughts, I haven't told Rob what we're, uh, uh, what we're doing yet, but, you know, seeing how this broke a million in, like, under a month, which for us is pretty quick, uh, let's talk about Alvin and the Chipmunks, the movie. <laughs> um, I love... <laughs> That movie. I know it's a little weird the way they go on a hot air balloon chase. Oh, no, 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 it's not that one. It's the live action CGI one. Uh, there is no live action. Oh, CGI okay, one. okay. Fair yeah. enough, fair enough. Um, <laughs> Such a thing does not exist, Mr. <laughs> Simpson. I fear you must have imagined it. I will say this it was not as bad as I thought it would be because uh, it was getting but so distracted. That's like, like saying the squeak shitting, walls are much worse. That's like saying shitting pearls is not as bad as shitting animals. No, you know, there's two things that I think are okay. Well, I feel like they had one good writer in there and then like a bunch of bad writers or studio notes or something. Probably. But once in there's a while there's some writer who probably lab. shot himself after the movie <laughs> came out. <laughs> I tried to save it. I tried. No, no, no. That was David Cross. Um, oh God, and that's no. the other thing I actually do like in he this movie. He was legitimately funny. He is legitimately funny in this and uh, does defend the movie. I mean, he's like, he doesn't say it's good, but he's defending like why he picked it. And, you know, for little kids are looking for junk food, it's fine. And he's kind of right. I think he but... also said he needed a house. <laughs> I thought that well, no, was no, no, somewhere... no. He said something like he hadn't worked in six months. Like, it was a long, long time. It's not yeah. like this job comes and it, like, like, paid for a house. <laughs> I gotta eat. <laughs> like, yeah. I gotta live somewhere. So. Um, but he is legitimately, even though he's the stereotypical, just dumb bad guy, he is legitimately <laughs> funny. Um, I, I laughed hard at his... They were just so passive-aggressive. Yeah. Um, you know what it reminded me of? That one, if you've seen Black Books, you know what I'm talking about. But it reminded me, and I always think you tap into that too, Simon Pegg's one-off character in Black oh, yeah. Books. Great! As long as we're on the same page. Wonderful! See ya! <laughs> yeah, I know you're talking Manny, about this. how can we fix this? <laughs> it's you just can tell, so like, he's, bad. He's doing the movie, he's doing the performance, he's doing what's required, but he's kind of doing it with a little... Yeah, you... You know what I'm really doing. <laughs> the, character, the character just comes off <coughs> as like... I say it's passive-aggressive, but it's more like... Aggressiveness being barely masked by passivity. Yeah. <laughs> like, it's just... It's almost aggressive-aggressive, but it's just not quite. And it's... God, it's great to watch. It's the only thing in that movie that I'm like, this is amazing. Uh, you know, and like, there's a scene where Theodore comes up. He's like, I had a bad dream. And you know he's supposed to talk, like, you know, down to this thing and not be very loving and stuff. But you know it's like, he's kind of doing the same thing just, like, for the movie. He's like, and this cute little thing's going to come up. He's going to say, I had a bad dream. You're supposed to go, oh, like that. But the way he does it is like, oh, <laughs> like he just is I doing so have he, nothing but contempt for you yeah like he's kind of trolling a little bit which I think was also the director's approach to the movie yeah. maybe the writers <laughs> we have nothing but contempt for you here's some chipmunks eating shit but every once in a while you'd have a line like uh, at the very end there's a very funny line where they're in like this little cat cage or dog cage whatever this like carrier case and uh, you think it's gonna be this big chase and then they're in the car he's like well how'd you get out of the cage it's like we're chipmunks that can talk. We can get out of a carrier cage. It wasn't even hard. It was just like a pure anti-climax. That was actually kind of funny. That one line was funny, but it did... I'm just like, wow, you didn't even have the budget for a climax. <laughs> like that, the movie just I was kind of thankful for that, I mean, honestly. I was thankful for that because it came to a merciful end. Yeah. But at the same time, I'm like... Wow, even by the low bar you set... The, the you only know, reason to watch just... it... The only reason to have a climax would be to see David Cross, like, you know, in the climax, like, saying jokes and stuff like that. I wanted that. to see David Cross, like, pointing a gun to the chipmunk's head. <laughs> like a hostage situation. Well, he does take like, one of them, he, like, yells at one of them. Yeah, like, I wanted, I wanted more of that. I'm like, no, let's go full 
batshit crazy with this. Um, and once in a while the chipmunks can be, not even, just Theodore, something about the way they animated Theodore, he was particularly cute. He was like just this little fuzzball, he was like what really, really cute. What struck me is so weird about the movie is, like going back to the cartoon, like, can talk about the Chuck Jones cartoon, but I think most of us... Oh, even before mo that. Yeah, most yeah. of the people watching this grew up with the 80s cartoon. When yeah. you think Alvin and Chung think that, Alvin had a personality. Like, it was called yeah. Alvin and the Chipmunks. He... There is zero personality. Zero. Like, I, whenever Theodore and Simon were on screen, I'm not saying it was great, but I'm like, all right, it feels like the chipmunks I You know, even Simon, with. the more I think about it, wasn't really like the intellectual or the egghead or anything like that. He never said anything particularly smart I or felt... eggheady or okay. anything like that. It was just Theodore. I felt, I felt, <laughs> can't believe I'm going to say this, but the voice acting involved, I felt more emotion out of <laughs> Simon. Maybe that's As well it. as yeah. Theodore than I did out of Alvin. No, I, Alvin I, is like nothing. You know, and he's supposed to be like the center. He's like, he's kind of like the nostalgia crack when we put him in a big group. He's like an egotist. He's always in the center like this. He's hogging the spot. Like here they get stage fright, which is like, what? You know, that's not the character at all. I feel like you could have just... You don't know how they ever overcome it. You could have just put that Alvin plushie and pulled the string and have it say, Konnichiwa, Alvin Des, or whatever it was, and like... That would have been just the exact same thing we got. Like, I felt like I was just watching a plushie that occasionally had a line. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there was just no... There was no personality to him, which is so funny, because Alvin has such a personality in all the incarnations, really, uh, even pretty early on. I mean, he was just always, like, he was the troublemaker, he was the egotist and everything. And even... Like, in the show and the other stuff, it wasn't even, like, Simon Theodore that would get into trouble. He would sort of egg them on. He was the schemer. And here they're just all kind of troublemakers, and that's not as much fun. And, uh, and again, the, the same problem that plagues a lot of these stupid movies, these adaptations from, like, older cards, is like, well, we need to tell the Chipmunks' origin story. <laughs> I don't give a shit about their origin story. I'm sorry. Well, if I you miss don't. an origin story, I don't care. I'd actually sort does of welcome anybody, the challenge of how do you tell an origin story with Alvin and the Chipmunks. anybody remember the origin story in the cartoon? I don't. <laughs> was there an origin story? I, I don't know. I'm sure I remember one episode. on YouTube's going to be like, of course that was me. But I, the, I most there's, people don't remember. There's one episode where there was like a, a guy that came in saying he was like their uncle and he was like another chipmunk, which again was just raising questions of like, because there's no other answer animals in this universe and these chipmunks were like you know yay hi they're like these mutant chipmunks i'm like how does this work it's like you're not our uncle i'm like but it still raises the question there must be some relation because there's only like six of you in the world the chip bets in the cartoon i remember had an origin story like some sort of little orphan ale, like they were in some yeah, sort of like horrific orphan russian thing. orphanage or something and sailed across the sea and it was fucking bizarre had this movie done that i would have been all over this because i'm like okay at least you went from broke that 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 that's insane. Well, and I, um, I like the fact they kept them chipmunk size. I think that was a like good fucking idea. Fucking Dr. Shivago or something. This is an epic <laughs> tale. Like, but it, that's the thing. It's, was it really? <laughs> I don't I don't know if I remember the same backstory as you. I, I, all I remember is like... There's something about an orphanage. They, they were in an orphanage. They were trying to get adopted. Like, the evil owners of the orphanage locked them up. So they sneak away and, like, hop on a boat, literally in, like, orphan rags. Like, and try to make it in Hollywood and are, like, walking the mean streets and selling their bodies. It gets <laughs> oh, my God! <laughs> no, that doesn't happen. <laughs> but I just remember as a kid, like, I'm just like, it was, like, epic, like, compared to, like, this. No, no, you, you just got that <laughs> image in my head of, like, them oh, on the corner, yeah. super high heels and, like, the cigarette hanging out. Just like, hey, you want a good time? Come on! Yeah, you know you want this! Oh, <laughs> go to message boards. Somebody's I'm it sure it's somewhere. I, I'm, I'm sure by the time this video is over, somebody has done it at post. Like the it. bags under the eyes, or like maybe a curler in there <laughs> that you forgot point, to take out. Point being, it was like some crazy rags to riches story. And this one, I'm just like, this is so... Boy, this is this is fucking gem movie, but with the yeah. chipmunks. Or was the gem movie a ripoff the chipmunks? I don't know. But they're both ripoffs of that damn story that we've seen a million same... times. Fucking story. Yeah. That just goes nowhere. It's like, oh, and the evil record producer is evil and they get drunk on their success and they realize that family is more important and but the it always strikes me as weird because Jason Lee was such an asshole. Yeah, in this movie, I, you know, I know you're supposed to like feel for him, like in terms of like, oh, he's afraid to have a family, but it's like, no, he is really like dismissive of them. I just love it's like you're afraid to have a family, you're afraid to grow up. I'm like, 
so adopt three chipmunks? <laughs> That's like the person who's just like, oh yes, I have a child. It's my kitty. Like, there well, is a difference between a child and a cat. I'm sorry. Like, well, and my favorite scene is when, you know, they're like, you know, it's like Christmas, Christmas Day. And they make this little card saying, you know, we love you and stuff. And it's like, you know... We just, you guys know, you know, I'm not actually your dad, right? He's like, well, you're kind of like our dad. He's like, fuck you, I'm not. Yeah, this guy's like, well, no, I'm not. And I'm just like, what an a-hole. <laughs> it was almost like a David Cross performance. It's like, no. Yeah. Uh-uh. Uh, well, um, and I, I've never been a huge Jason Lee fan, I'll be very honest. Uh, I think there's just... Depends. He's not all for anything, but I, I can't role. get into him. Um, I, I will say this. I, I did have this one joke, because I could not figure out... Why his voice was so hoarse? He sounded like me last week. <laughs> yeah, like the whole movie is like, Alvin, Alvin. I'm just, what are you doing, Alvin? I was just joking that I'm like, he just goes to bed every night after filming and screams into his pillow yeah, until I think, he I think falls to in. sleep. <laughs> I think that man. That's all I could imagine. Like, oh, 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 God, I'm Alvin the Turbulence. <laughs> well, I remember like when I was walking, um, I don't know, seeing a movie or something, I saw a poster for Alvin the Chipmunks, and I don't know why I was even optimistic at all. I was just kind of like, oh, I grew up with that. I wonder what they're going to do with that. And then the trailer played that exact same uh, day after I saw the post. I'm just like, oh, it's it's this kind of movie. <laughs> you know, Alvin eats shit. You owe me big. Tee hee ha ha. Um, I, that was... That, I think that was rock bottom for me. Because <laughs> you'd sit there and be like, oh, your 80s cartoons were so goofy. You know what? Our characters weren't eat like Alvin and the Chipmunks, they weren't eating shit, all right? <laughs> Even by the low bar we set in the 80s, we were still a thousand times better than this fucking monstrosity. Yeah. Well, and from what I hear, I hear they just get worse and worse and worse. Uh, we probably will look at them at some oh, point. God. I don't know when. I mean, we want to Chipwrecked. The road chip. Chip puns. <laughs> piece, of, piece of chip. <laughs> piece, the piece of chip movie. <laughs> Um, so, uh... Bull chip. <laughs> bull chip. Um, I really hate those scenes <clears throat> where it's like, the person's running out, and then it's just like, Oh, well, if it, is, if it isn't you still having trouble with exposition, 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 it is just so lazy. Oh, and she... And okay, I'm sorry. That one was not a good actor. I don't... Okay. <laughs> I hate going that route, because I don't like to besmirch actors, but... I, I'll just give her the credit, and maybe she was just doing this for a paycheck. And or she's like, maybe, hey, maybe she's doing something else bad. Right? I, I'm yeah. not, but I don't remember who that was, but somewhere near the end, I just was like, what the fuck is up with her performance? It's like, mm, still not going to say it? I was like, what, did, what was that? Hi. Oh, I can't believe I said that. Same old day. day. What's going on? Can't, just... can't grow up. Can't go. <laughs> she was the heart of the movie, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> same, same old woman, can't have an actual emotion. Like, she just was so weird. Yeah, that sucked. <laughs> um, I, I'm trying to... Man, I'm trying to go through, like, all the other things in this movie. And it's like, you know what else? I'm glad this is kind of dying, as far as I know, but kind of like that inspirational music, like when... Uh, Dave takes the uh, the muffins and it's like do 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 and I feel like that music was everywhere oh, it was like, in the 90s and the early 2000s and finally it's store. dying down but yeah it was kind of no, like that no we just don't see those sort of movies because we're grown ass adults that could be it that's something know. to do and that's not a slam against seeing animated films that's a slam against seeing stupid films these kind of movies yeah. huge differences who's that guy who would always do that music sometimes it'd be okay was it John Denny is he John the one? Ooh, yeah, he did like Liar Liar and, and Mrs. Doubtfire and stuff. <laughs> yeah, which no, no, what's, no, what, I, what's what he can turn into a good I think score. Mrs. Doubtfire but... was Howard Shore. Oh, you're right. Yeah. But no, I, I know, yeah, how, yeah, I know no, the type okay. of music you're thinking of. Where it's yeah, just, I want to say it's oh. really like hardcore John Denny uh, kind of stuff. And once in a while he could do a good score. Uh, but yeah, like you always got him for that, you know, just. Whimsy! Yeah, just person walking down the street while the credits play and the music going. Da -da -da! It's the, do, 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 we're happy. It's, it's the joke about Randy Newman, about how Randy Newman just scores your life. Yeah. Walking down the street, walking down the street. It's like the same thing, but in a musical form. Do, 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 do. It's, just, it's like, <laughs> shut up. Not every... like Okay, that to me is normally the sign of a bad comedy. Your movie, Liar Liar, is the rare example, because I actually really like that yeah. movie. Um, it's goofy, but you know, most movies that have a score like that, that to me is the last 
act of desperation. It's like, we have nothing funny, mm -hmm. we have nothing interesting to look at, distract it with some cartoony score. Yeah. Like... No, no, whimsical cartoony yeah. score. Because you can have cartoony, but this is like the See, whimsical... it's like, funny! Oh, the music's telling you to laugh! <laughs> you know, I wonder if... Like a brat laugh. <laughs> I wonder if, like... Could you make the argument that that kind of score maybe start with Mrs. Doubtfire with Howard Shore? Because that, that's no. actually not that bad a score. But no, like, I, the, the, I feel those, like it's gone back further than that. Those type of scores like have been around since the like dawn the cartoony of time. and the whimsical, you know, kind of thing. I, no, I guess you could I like feel Disney like I feel like that's always been around. Yeah, like Disney always had a lot of that. Um, oh, watch like old like Disney like live action Disney Channel stuff. <laughs> yeah, and Nicola. like that's no, always. No, you're been right. Around. You're right. Um, but I was thinking specifically like in movies, but again, just Disney films, that's always kind of been there. Um, but... And Howard Shore, he never went on to anything. No, nothing. Um, so she, he should get more attention. You know? I know. Maybe, maybe do fantasy, I don't know. Um, like a big fantasy. Like one of those like, I don't know, Potter things. Yeah, like... Like um, uh, who scored Potter? Uh, James Horner, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, like, like that guy. And, um, uh, you know who else needs more work? John Williams. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, he kind of does. <laughs> for, no, for being retired, no, I, he no, technically I think, needs no, more. I, no, I think he needs to stop. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. Yeah, he's definitely done. Poor bastard's a workaholic. <laughs> <laughs> Even when he's retired, he's still working. Yeah, no, I love John Williams. It's like, you can take a break, man. <laughs> like, you can enjoy retirement. It's like, no, there are more Star Wars movies! <laughs> um... um <laughs> I should, oh, I just, I just had to. I wasn't gonna say. Um, it's like one other thing. Oh, uh, comparing it to the animated one, you know, the Chipmunk Adventure. I think we gotta compare a little bit. Oh well, there's no that. question about it. The animated one's a thousand times better. It is, but and not that's that... not. Fun. You know what? I hate it when people are like, "Maybe it's nostalgia goggles." I'm like, "Yes, there are a lot of times you can look totally, at nostalgia but... goggles." This nothing to do with nostalgia goggles because I'll admit if I saw no, the. A little bit. I mean, no. It's... If I saw the chip, if I saw the chipmunk adventure as an adult, I would be like, okay, this was mostly pointless. Mm. Like, this is yeah. obviously intended for kids. But I would be like, you know, this is really good animation. Yeah, and it's like, and it's, it's, and it's, creative. it's entertaining. It's fun. It's bizarre. I'm gonna go on a diamond smuggling. <laughs> like, <laughs> everything was about like smuggling, gave, and you know, but eventually it gave kids what they wanted. Like, when yeah. we were a kid. Which okay, if you're a kid, which would you rather see? Oh, some, like, story about how the chipmunks get a record deal, like, with an asshole, and they're, they're asshole, like... And they're mostly in the house, and... And, and there's this girl, the name will never grow up, and, like, <laughs> what, what, or... Hey, we got diamond smuggling, we got alligators, we got singing and dancing world. going across the globe, hot air balloons, it's crazy, it doesn't make any sense, but you're gonna see shit, man! Every shit. racist stereotype you can imagine. That's right! Um. Because it's the 80s, <laughs> and that's how we fucking roll! <laughs> I'm trying, yeah, I was looking at some of that movie again, and it's like, the, the Mexican part isn't that bad, but like, when they go to the tribe, I don't even know where that's supposed to be, it's just, but whoever it is, I'm oh, kind of... My, my favorite is, <laughs> is now that Gene Wilder is gone, God bless him. All of the clips they're digging up from his movies, I was looking up, you know, uh, Blazing Saddles. Couldn't make that nowadays. Oh, yeah, but my no, favorite no. was like, first Gene Wilder movie I ever saw was actually Silver Streak. Mm -hmm. So the dad had put it on. I'm watching yeah, that again. Gene Wilder do blackface? <laughs> I'm just like, oh my god, you could never, like, 19, this happened in 1976. You, you want to know why that's I watched works, that movie as a seven year old in the early 80s. No, you want to know why that works, though? It's because he does it so poorly. Well, they I think that's why you can still get it. Well, away they with rewrote that. it, too. Apparently, Richard Pryor was like, this. And he was he was gonna walk off the film. I mean, we're getting off track. Yeah, but I know. Richard Pryor was good. It's a chipmunk movie. Who gives a fuck? <laughs> Richard Pryor was gonna walk off the film, and they're like, no, 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 no. like we want. She's like, fine. So he and Gene Wilder rewrote the scene to a point where Richard Pryor is like, okay, I think we can do this, and I can still maintain my self fucking dignity. <laughs> and so no, they did. And actually, it's a very funny scene. And it, it fucking works because they they worked on it together, but. <laughs> Yeah, like, 80s, 70s and 80s, man. Just, what the fuck? Yeah, just, um... Just, I'll take just it no over DCL. this album and the Chipmunks Yeah, day. I'll still take that. Um, but, uh, yeah, there was just kind of like this... You know what it was? There was, even though lots of things you can point to are, are wrong with that movie and stuff, but there was an ambition to it. And there was this idea that it's like, it's for kids... We know we can kind of get away with anything at animation. Let's get away with anything and let's really do something with the animation. This was a thing back when we were kids and we've completely lost it. 
completely lost that concept of, oh, if you're doing a movie, like, based on a children's property, let's make it big and amazing. Give kids something they want up the ante. I, I'd argue a little bit, like, the Lego movie, I think they're doing that, like, the Kung Fu Panda movies. And yes, stuff. Doing a little okay, bit, Kung but... Fu Panda not based on a property. Lego may be the only one. It's based on a property, but... I... Something that's based on a property, that's true. That's like, a, like okay, an Alvin and the Chipmunks cartoon. Now we're gonna make a movie. The Smurfs cartoon. Yeah. Now we're gonna make Gem, a movie. you know, Transformers. Yeah. And, and, and the funny like thing is, like, they, they take these properties, like, when we were kids, you would want to see these things. It would be like, oh my god, we're going to see things we couldn't see on the small screen. Kids nowadays, you get diminishing returns. It's like, you're going to see less <laughs> than what you got on the fucking cartoon show. Yeah, it's one of those things where it's like, when they made a movie, it's like, ooh, it's like a movie. Like, big things are going to happen. And now it's just sort of like, oh, okay, this yeah. story, these things. We would beg I don't know, our throw, parents throw in to a Matrix see reference. Yeah. Throw in these songs, these ads, if you're good. We would beg our parents to see them, and if I were a kid and I saw this album in the Chipmunks movie first, I would not beg to see the sequel. No. <laughs> no freaking way. <laughs> Squeakle, thank you very much. The Squeakle, I'm sorry. Well, the and piece the funny of thing, chip. I remember seeing the trailer for the animated uh, Chipmunks, and I was really excited, because it just looked like it had everything. I mean, because there's so much you can show from that movie that looks so freaking cool. Uh, so there is something that got you excited, and like... I mean, obviously kids saw the Chipmunk movies. I, I don't think they were number one at the box office, but they got their money back. They were hits enough, you know. And, uh, yeah, I mean, kids wanted to see enough because they were just small and cute and tee-hee-ha-ha, -ha, but it's like, I doubt they were excited. You know, I do kind of miss that excitement of seeing something that you watched or you kind of grew up with. When and we like, were now kids, there's a movie. Like, there a movie two, kind of yeah. meant something. There were two sets of movies. There were the movies you were really excited for. Mom, Dad, take this. This is going to be amazing. And there was that movie that your parents are just like, we're going to take you to see this, mostly because they couldn't think of anything better to do. And you sat there and you watched it like, oh, <laughs> like that was a nice distraction. But that's it. Mm -hmm. Like, I feel like more and more it's just becoming the latter. <laughs> like, it's, it's like, oh, here's just something to distract you. And I feel like there's a cynical part of Hollywood that it's like, well, that's all we need. Like, this, just because the parents want to get out of the house, they just want to shove their kids in the movie they just feed them shit. Well, and there is, uh, the, the last thing I should talk about here, because I did bring up in the review, was what I call them, I think the Awe Girls, I think is what we called them. Um, they really do exist, and I know this because my mom is one of them. She's like one of the, she's seen all the chipmunk movies, she just finds them so See, adorable. This, okay, this was my problem, though, because like, we had this discussion, because I'm like, let's not stereotype all girls everywhere. Oh, no, 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 no. What bothered me about that is like, you know, everybody, it's Tamara and, uh, what was Ayanna it? Ayanna Heather and Ayanna, yeah. It, what bothered me about it is I felt that was the wrong age group. Most people I know who like this movie are freaking baby boomers. <laughs> It's, like, no, literally, no, like, saying, people over the age of 50. No, I'm not gonna lie, I actually like, almost, almost everybody I know. Like, our mother, my mother's friends, friends of friends, uh, you know, the church lady. The, well, no, like, what I was getting to, no, because I remember, um... What was I in college? I can't remember when the first one came out, but I do remember there's just like this group of girls, you know, like maybe even college girls, you know, something like that, that were uh, just talking about just how cute it was. And they were doing the dance, Ugh. and they were doing. It was just, but again, it was clearly you a distraction. Hanging. They just wanted to. see You were hanging out with the wrong stuff. girls. Oh no, no, no! I mean, this was just a side conversation, you know. Like I could just hear it over there, and I have heard that before. I've heard, you know, like whatever high school girls or college girls or something like that. They just went because it's cute and it's cuddly, and but like you said. Just kind of a, you know, junk food distraction, you know, kind of thing. I'm not saying they don't exist. I'm saying I haven't met them. Everybody I know who likes this movie is over the age of 50. <laughs> but or, I was under almost, the, or under the age of 10. Yeah, I was almost going to have um, my mom as one of the odd girls. <laughs> sure. but, but then I was realizing, like, you know, we're going to do a big musical number here. I probably should well, no, that wouldn't work. Go to all but that that's stuff. the... That, under 10 and over 50, that is the demographic for this movie. Mm -hmm. You know, um, you know what it's like. You know, like that. Those don't who don't know there's better things to live for, and those who've given up on life. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> I want to say it's kind of like, you know how sometimes... Kill me, by the way, if we hit that age and we like a movie like that. Um, oh. You know how some people watch something ironically? Like, it's mm. not that, but I feel it is kind of like, hey, you know, I've had a long week. I've had, you know, just, what? turn my brain on, see something cute. And it's like, Chipmunks was kind of thing. They're like, wouldn't it be funny if we saw that? That'd be so cute. It'd be so, like, I don't know. These are the conversations I've heard once or I'd twice. I'd rather stab and... myself in the eye with a drinking straw. <laughs> oh, yeah, we would, yeah. But, um... Yeah, but that's definitely conversations I've heard before. And honestly, it, if that's your thing, okay. I mean, it's not like harmful. It's not like Go oh my see god. see a better cute anything, movie then. Yeah, I feel like there's a lot of better cute. What? Maybe there aren't a lot of better cute movies. Well, then you know like, what? We, we only get them once in a while. Like anime films have gotten a lot better, and they do have these cute characters and everything. But yeah, I'd be lying if I said there was like a ton of them. See something enriching then. <laughs> Do something better with your lives. Better your damn self. <laughs> um, so, oh, you were talking about ambition. I, so I found something <coughs> out. If what I what's been told to me is true, one of the reasons it looks so good because I, when I was when you showed me the the clip because I hadn't seen the movie. I think when you and Lindsay did it, mm -hmm. I saw it, but I hadn't seen it still in a, in a number of years now. Like, I was like looking at it again. I'm like, wow. I forgot how really freaking good this animation was. Like, yeah, the animated one. Yeah. yeah, the animated one. I'm like, it's a freaking Chipmunks movie. There was no excuse. There was no reason yeah. this should have animation this good. But I'm like, this is literally, and I, I, not making this up. Like, watch it. Trust me. This is Disney animation that did it as good, and in some cases maybe better than Disney, than Disney was doing in the middle of the 80s. Yeah. Like, that, was, no, that, that was the dark ages for Disney. And uh, that's what that's when Care Bears beat the Black Cauldron. <laughs> yeah, when Care Bears beat the Black Cauldron. Now, funny thing, this ties it all together. From what I heard, and maybe this isn't true, but from what God told to me was apparently what happened is Black Cauldron was such an effing disaster for Disney that there were layoffs. There was eh, we don't know what we're gonna People do with going the animation to Bluth team. And Amblin. Yeah, Bluth. You, you had Bluth and Amblin. You know, operating at the same time. They picked off a bunch of Disney. So Disney basically was in the shitter, and either Disney had let some of their animators go, or some of the animators realized that this was a sinking ship. So all of a sudden, the MGM out of nowhere has a bunch of Disney quality animators from Disney on their little chipmunk project. You, you wanna know what and I, I think if that's the case, it freaking shows. You wanna know what I think happened too, because if you watch the animated chipmunks again, uh, like, half of it is stellar animation. Like I said, I oh, mean, yeah, the just whole thing does gorgeous. not look like no, no, every but song yeah, sequence. No, but then the yeah. other half kind of looks like just kind of a slightly high budget yeah. episode, it's you know, right. there you go. The time. Yeah. You know, because the, the, the show didn't have great animation. A lot of cartoons back then didn't. But, uh, you know, this looks like a high-budget version of, like, you know, the show. But then the other half is just, like, gorgeous, and you can totally tell, I bet you anything, that they were working on this movie. And then, like, when Black Cauldron happened, or that split of, like, a bunch of the animators, the Disney animators are suddenly like, come with us, come over here, yeah, I, and maybe it, they took over. It could be, I don't know if it was that, or MGM just literally assigned them to certain scenes, like ringers, uh, you know, just like, okay, well, let's make these bits look really good, like, I have no idea what it, but the, I, th when I watch it, I'm like, this shouldn't exist. There's no way a Chipmunks movie should have scenes this gorgeously animated. Yeah, no, but like I said, I think with... I kind of want to say with anything, with any of this kind of stuff, and I believe in smaller movies, you know, you need smaller movies and stuff, but I think if you are going to take something that exists, you're going to make a movie. Make it big, because like I said, I'm thinking back to that trailer, I remember I saw, like, you know, the chipmunks, you know, battling sharks, the chipmunks flying around the world, the chipmunks, uh, you know, in Rome, doing these rockin' scores with fireworks going, and... The chipmunks leading the Scottish against the English and shouting, Freedom! It wouldn't be shocked, <laughs> you know, uh, and just them doing all these cool things, and you know, and like people, you know, all, all around the world, people throwing spears, and then like, you know, now they're in uh, the Atlantic, or, uh, uh, you know, uh, just suddenly in the snow and igloos and stuff, and like, it's just something where it's like, it felt so huge and so big, and you're right, I think when they do properties now, it's like, uh-oh, there's Duck in Manhattan, because... I think they're just going for the cute, and again, I think they're going for kind of like that all-girls thing. They're going for like the, you know, people like our moms, you know, or um, our mom, sorry. <laughs> well, you just mentioned all of those things, and I think about how the new movie opened with just, they're sad and depressed and shoving acorns into a yeah, tree. Yeah, half of the chipmunks, nothing. Yay. So, you had a bad day, you sped up, and that was it. Just like, tee-hee, ha-ha, I know that song, and it's high pitch now, ha-ha-ha. 
that's it. Like, you know, and... I don't know. The first one, but like the clouds and this beautiful text and this score that I was like, duh, 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 you're gonna get an adventure. <laughs> you know, and I, no, I don't know. E even that measly Just sing little that bit. Song again. Duh, 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 you're gonna get an adventure. <laughs> wow, be a huge hit. <laughs> yeah, and I, and I, why even. It, why didn't you just make the whole fucking thing animated? That's what I'd like. No, it probably cost too much. Maybe, but I. Uh, then why are you doing it? Like, it, I don't know. It, because apparently it made money, and that's clearly <sighs> what you can see, so. It's, just, it's wrong. Oh. Um, feels wrong somehow. I know there's gonna be a million comments saying the, the squeakles are worse. I trust you. Um, yeah, you don't need to tell yeah. us that. We. I, I will we say, know. as as bad as this film was... We I, could figure that out, actually, without anybody yeah. telling us. As bad as this film was, I will say, there were some things that, like I said, David Cross was fun. Sometimes, you know, they were a little cute, and sometimes there was a good line, you know... Uh, so there was at least that. I'm I sure like, I the felt like Theodore don't and have Simon, that. to a certain extent, had some personality. Whenever yeah. they were on screen and they weren't doing something insanely stupid, I'm like, all right, this kind of feels like Alvin and Chimmons. There's not much yeah. going on, but it's not offending me. Yeah. Um, and then they eat shit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Alvin. <laughs> so um, yeah, that's about it. Uh, hopefully, more videos are going to be coming your way. I'm just catching up with NC stuff and everything. And uh, next week, we'll get the Steven Universe back on track, uh, the vlogs, and uh, we shall see you guys then. So, later. Really? You're not going to say it? Not going to say it. No, you're not going to say it? No, I'm not going to say it. Not going to say it? No.